we're still seeing people who live on the other side of the fence. People like us who live in a, a different time and a different place. People that we've come to see as neighbors. Walking in our neighborhoods lately, I've noticed that people's lawns look great. People who didn't have time to do yard work before now have an abundance of time. The same place where they do work is now also the place where they can exercise those hobbies that they have. They're happening at the same location. Have you started any new hobbies since you've maybe had some more time at home? Even essential workers may have found their schedules looking a little bit different. So in your time at home, have you found any new hobbies? And what are they? Think about other hobbies that you've had, ones that haven't started recently, ones that have not started in light of current events. What are the things that you've been doing for a while now? Maybe things you've been doing since you were much younger. Things you took lessons for that you still continue to do. What are they? What are some of those things? Then there are those things that there's just not time for. You'd love to be able to, to pick up some of those activities again, but it seems like there's just not time for it. And before you know it, a few years have gone by and you haven't done those things. Another question that doesn't seem to totally relate, but I think we see that it will here a little bit later. What is your job? What is it that you do for a living? On your business card, or if you don't have a business card, if you have one made up, what would it be? What would it say? Another part of that might be, what have you retired from? What was it that you used to do for a living? Maybe you're still busier than ever, but as far as a job, you've retired from that. And then another angle for that is, if you're not working right now, maybe you're newly graduated, maybe you're in the middle of college right now, what do you want to do? Think about those jobs. You're either doing it now, you've retired from it, or it's something you're going to plan to do maybe very soon. What is it that fills your time when you don't have a hobby, when you're not doing your hobby? Okay, work time and pastimes, they show up early in the Bible. In Genesis chapters one through three, we see the names Adam and Eve. In chapter four, there are some more familiar names, Cain and Abel. In chapter five, the story starts building up with another name, Noah. But between Cain and Abel's story and Noah's introduction, there are several names in a few situations. Some of those situations aren't always very comfortable to talk about, let alone just to read about. But right now, I want us to see three men that we only learn little tidbits about. Genesis chapter 4, verses 19 through 22. Genesis 4, 19 through 22. They read like this. Lamech married two women, one named Ada, the other Zillah. Ada gave birth to Jabel. He was the father of those who live in tents and who raise livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all who play stringed instruments and pipes. Zillah also had a son, Tubal Cain, who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron. Tubal Cain's sister was Nama. Well, there are things here that we can certainly question, and some of those will come back and we just won't have any answers. But there's also some things here that we can question and we can come back with certainty. There's three neighbors here. What do you learn about Jabel? I'll let you look at that verse again. What do you learn about Jabel? Yeah, a tent owner and worked in livestock. Have you ever done either for a length of time? I'm not just talking camping overnight in a tent. Have you ever lived in a tent for a while? Or have you raised livestock? Now, surely out of all those watching, somebody's done these things, and you know that both of those are certainly hard work. Things don't come easy when you're living in a tent. You usually can think more of a nomadic lifestyle, though not always. And then raising livestock, that's a lot of work. The rest of us maybe spend some time behind the meat counter having to make a choice between chicken or beef, but raising the livestock and all that goes with that. Jabel. You can envision people coming to him to, to buy or to trade for meat. Okay, what do you learn about Jubal? Again, take a look. What do you learn about Jubal? Yeah, played instruments. String and woodwinds, it sounds like. 
you've been watching KOP videos, you heard a little while back, you heard me say that, shared it in a sermon, that I don't know anything about music other than listening to it. I'm always good for that. Now, was this Jubal's career? We don't know. It could have been. He may have also had this as a hobby and then his family after him. But you can envision people coming to him to, to hear him play. How about Tubal Cain? What did he do? Yeah, a blacksmith, an iron worker. Iron worker brings to mind those who work on the, the high rise buildings, and we see those pictures, especially maybe New York at the, the turn of the last century. Tower of Babel, it doesn't come up for another five or six chapters. You know, that's another high rise there. But as a tool maker, you can envision people coming to Tubal Cain to get what they needed. So, where we usually have a list of names, more details are given. Why are these things even mentioned? Usually it's just a list of names, but when we read this, we have those things listed about not only who they are, but, but what they do, what they're known for. Why are these things even mentioned? Why would you say? So often it's just those names. How would you answer that if asked? Do you think God even notices your work or your hobbies? Does God notice when you keep your yard up? Does God notice when you fire up your computer to work on that project again? Does God notice when you take out that yarn or get the sewing machine out? Does He notice those things? Does God notice when your work week starts and, and you start in, whether you go somewhere or right now, whether you're staying put, does God notice? Over the years, I've had plenty of people tell me what they do for a living. Oftentimes, it's me asking them, maybe meeting them for the first time or just a couple of times after that, and we're talking about what they do. So often, people will say, well, I just, and then they tell me what they do. I just wait tables. I just work with money. Whatever they, they say, just, I just, as if to say that what they do is not important. Our neighbors here, these three men remind us that what we do is important. And if God notices it, it's important. And it looks like here, these three men and their families and those that came after them, God notices. And again, if God notices, it's important. Think again about what you do with your time. Not necessarily the big blocks of time. What is it maybe sometimes you just have a few minutes each day and you just get to work on this or work on that for just a little bit because you enjoy it. Think about those times. How can you bring praise to God in what you do? How can you bring praise to God in what you do? Because remember again, He notices. Now if you know that He notices, how can you bring praise to Him in what you do? What can you start doing to remind yourself that, that God sees you, that God notices what you're doing? It could be that you say a word of thanks before you start out, as you get up the, the baseball cards, as you go out to work in the garden, that you just stop and you just say a word of thanks. And maybe you just say that one word, but you're so mindful of the one you say it to. Thanks. Thank you. Maybe as the work day starts that you say thank you. You're not necessarily looking forward to the work at hand. Maybe you're thankful for a body that can do it, a mind that can do it. But you know what that job provides and you know who provided it. And you just stop and say thank you. Maybe you can see the result of your work as something that God has given you to use. Now, how can you use it for Him? How can you use the money that you earned? How can you use the product that you've made? Maybe again, it's something that's harvested from the garden or it's something you've made with your hands. How can you use that in God's name? So we're using our work or our hobbies to point back to God. No matter what you do, no matter 
how important others think it is or how unimportant someone thinks it is, God notices. God notices. Jabel, Jubal, and Tubal Cain, they got more than a mention in God's Word. In fact, we saw that God notices. Yeah, God, God zeroes in, not in a bad way, but God sees what we're doing. He's able to see from a distance what's going on. We learned the name of these men. We learned what they did. And we learned that God notices. We learned that from our neighbors.